Hi there. In this episode, I'm going to show you some easy bedroom decorating tips. I'm Erin Valencic, award-winning interior designer and furniture designer based here in Los Angeles. I work on projects of various styles, budgets, and sizes from million dollar homes to quick fixes on a budget. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I turned this average bedroom from this to this and finally to this. If you'd really like to get the most out of this video, click the link in the description to download the material palette for this room with paint colors, materials, furniture selections, light fixtures, and accessories I used in this design. With this download, you'll be able to take the learning from this episode and apply them into your bedroom immediately. Let's get started. So when planning this guest room, I had quite a bit of this furniture from my last house. If you've seen any of our other videos, you probably recognize some of this bedding or from some of my design courses. Anytime you move, you need to figure out what you have and where you're gonna put it. And I always like to make those decisions based on color palette and what can I put together that is gonna look the best together versus just stuff that I like and I hope that it works. So knowing that I had all these neutrals and blacks and creams already in my last guest room that I really liked, I brought those same items together in here but added a few new things I had to redo the color palette of this room in terms of the paint and the carpet because it was absolutely this weird blue before and it wouldn't match any of the furniture that I have so the first thing we did was just paint out that blue so that we could see the room without that color screaming at us and then I changed the carpet as well I went with a really neutral seagrass carpet in here I like the texture of it it's a lot more sophisticated than I think than most bedroom carpets and then I threw a decorative rug on the top so I wanted to go with a carpet that coordinated with my existing furniture and also coordinated with the hardwood floor color. So as you're making these choices together, you want to think ahead and think what is going to work the best with what I have existing. And what I have existing was a lot of neutrals. So I went with more neutrals with the new items. The color of the wood flooring outside in the hallway now transitions beautifully into the color of this carpet. And it's almost a seamless transition, yet the textures change. So that's a really nice thing to do. Once we got a coat of white dove paint from Benjamin Moore up on the walls, it really brought this space to kind of a neutral, calming, soothing place where now I'm building my design on top of it. I put up one wall of this grass cloth wallpaper behind the bed to see if I like it. Um, I had this left over from a job, so that's the benefit of being an interior designer. Sometimes you get some freebies. But this is a pretty inexpensive grass cloth wallpaper. You, you'll notice I use grass cloth a lot. It gives a lot of texture, but no pattern. So it's much more soothing and calm and you can kind of put anything you want on top of it. So I had one wall done to just see what it looks like, and then I can determine if I want to do the rest of the space. Once I brought my bed in here on the white dove paint, the bed was looking really yellow. You'll notice this headboard has a lot of cream yellowish tones to the white, and against this paint, it actually made the headboard look dirty and dingy because it's much more yellow than the wall color. So had I not wallpapered, I probably would have painted a much warmer, creamier, more yellow white so that the headboard doesn't look dirty. Most people I find use way too white of a white paint. And when you use a bright, bright, pure, pure, stark white, it looks like primer. And it actually makes most of your things look dirty because they're not stark white, they're creams. And so by just changing the color of your white, you can actually make your room and your house look so much better. So now with this wallpaper up, I think the headboard looks really pretty. It's coordinating with the warmth of the linen duvet. And I'm really liking that. So we're gonna go ahead and most likely wallpaper the rest of the room. I have quite a few of these left to go, so we'll probably end up using it in here. But what I'm gonna do first is paint out all the window trim and the crown molding in the ceiling before we wallpaper because it's much more difficult to get that beautiful crisp line of paint around your molding after you've wallpapered because the paint gets all over the paper. So if you know you're gonna wallpaper, remove all your outlets, change all your switches, paint all your trim, do all that stuff and put the paper up last, and that's gonna give you the best result. This house was built in the 80s and just has outlets and switches kind of everywhere and I hate looking at them. I think they're so ugly and it ruins your wall. So things like this, like this outlet here on the middle of the wall, it's almost the first thing you see when you walk in, you're gonna take it out. Nobody needs an outlet over there. So if you have an electrician coming to your place to do any type of work, go through your rooms and figure out where you don't need outlets and just remove them. 
Now, if you're building a new house, code requires them every so many feet. In California, I think it's like every four feet or something ridiculous in a lot of rooms. So I like to go in afterwards and take them out. Also, old phone jacks, nobody's using them anymore. Just take them out. That type of stuff is pretty easy to do yourself because it's actually you know low voltage and other types of cable, audio cables. You don't have to worry about the electrical. But if you're removing outlets, have an electrician do it because he actually has to remove all the power from it and not just patch it. But we're gonna do that before we paper this wall and also paint all the window trim. It's much too bright, cold of a white and it looks cheap. And the last thing you want to draw attention to in a space is the contrast between your wall and your trim. You actually want them to kind of be seamless together. So I'm always going into spaces and painting the ceiling a warmer white, painting the trim a warmer white. And it looks so much better because then when you walk in, your eye isn't immediately drawn to the trim. That's not really what you want people to look at in your bedroom or in any room, frankly. So these are all going to get a lot warmer. You can see that this ceiling is still kind of almost a blue white. It's so cold and that doesn't feel good. And the last thing you want to do is like lay here and look at this ugly stark white blue ceiling, right? So by painting that a warmer shade, it's just going to make this room feel cozier and more comfortable and overall just give it a glow. And I find that's what happens when you hit the right paint colors. You'll walk into your room and it'll just have that nice glow and that's what you're striving for. So being a house built in the 80s, they were really anti-ceiling lighting at that point. All of these outlets were actually tied to the switches, so you could have floor lamps and table lamps everywhere. But I love overhead light, especially decorative pendants. So I had this beautiful pendant installed. It's more of a pendant than a flush mount, but because this is a bedroom, I had it installed super close to the ceiling. I think it looks great. The gold adds such a beautiful warm glow at night. I'm a big fan of warmth in lighting. So to achieve that, don't go with silver light fixtures. If you want warmth, if you want that nice glow, go with golds, brasses, bronzes, because those colors are gonna look warmer when they're turned on in the evening. So now that we've got our kind of foundation in here, changed the carpet, figured out the paint, I know what's going on with the wall covering, now we can attack the window coverings. I hate these blinds, they're terrible. If you have them, get rid of them. Unfortunately, they are expensive and a lot of people spent a lot of money on these things back in the day, but they are not lovely. So my first choice would be to have nothing versus this, but because this is a guest room and this looks right into the front yard, obviously we need privacy. So I'm gonna have these taken down and we've already installed our drapery rod. I had some drapery left over. These used to be in my living room years ago. Then I stuck them in a box, put them in the garage, and because I put in white linen in my living room for many, many years. And then when I moved here, I took them out, had them cleaned, and I think they're gonna look great in this guest room. It's all about using what you have sometimes. So these, will be hanging here. Uh, they coordinate with the black touches. I already have some kind of black and white pillows, you know, going on with this bed. And so we're gonna hang these here, and then I'm going to do some new shades, either in a soft, kind of a sheer fabric, or maybe some of my favorite shades from Hartman and Forbes, which are like natural wovens, and they kind of coordinate with that seagrass um, carpet that we have going on, and I love that natural texture. So I have yet to determine what I'm gonna put on the window as shades, but I know one thing for certain, I'm not gonna do an inside mount shade, uh, because who wants to look at that little bit of wall above it? It's kind of silly. And once you raise these, because they are inside mount, they stack right here and they cover the window, which is also the last thing you want your shades or your window coverings to do is cover the beautiful view. So if I was to hang them at the ceiling, when you raise them up and stack them, they're gonna cover that bit of the wall and you're gonna have more window, which is really nice. So on this main wall, I'm gonna go with an outside mount shade all the way at the top. And then on these little guys on the side, um, because those shades would probably hit each other, I'll have to see if I can work it out to have them both outside mount, or we'd keep these little side windows as an inside mount and do the main back wall as an outside mount. I've already started with the landscaping to kind of bring in some more privacy and softness into this room. So you notice I put an olive tree right here in the middle. That is to give some laciness and some softness and a feeling, a touch of privacy to this guest room if people were outside. And the same with this little view. This looks right to the front steps and the front arrival of the house. So I did a pot there with another tall olive tree. So not only does it kind of block people coming in, it gives you a little bit more of a sense of privacy, 
but more importantly, it blocks the view of the driveway from this room because the driveway is not a sexy thing to look at. So think about that as you're looking at plant material and how you can make your rooms feel better inside by choosing the right plant material outside. Uh, we're also gonna light these at night, light the olives and have a little spotlight going up, which will look absolutely beautiful when you're inside this room. So all those choices just mean a better feeling interior space and you can do that a lot by just paying attention to the plant material that you're putting outside your windows to give privacy or to highlight a view, etc. So window coverings will go up next. I brought in this bench that I had, actually this was at my office, but the color worked great and I didn't need it there anymore. And so in this room, we now have a fun bench. This is in an alpaca fabric, which I really like. It's got a little bit of texture to it and the colors worked out perfectly. You can see that none of these neutrals are the exact same shade, but they all work together once you put them in one space. So don't worry about your colors matching too, too well. It's actually really nice when the neutral shades that you choose are not all exactly the same. It starts to give you that fun kind of texture and layering uh, to your palette and not looking like everything is exactly, exactly the same. But you also still want them to coordinate. We've got another bedside table coming here. It got damaged in the move, so I'm gonna have another big, big bedside table. That's my Kenzie from my furniture collection. Um, I had those in the guest room before as well, so they fit in here really nicely. And some cool art going up. Brought in another one of my cabinets, the Mont Blanc cabinet. And this was in my dining room years ago. And then it got moved to another room, and now it's going to have its new life in the guest room. I really like that it adds a little sparkle. It's got that beautiful shell mirror on the face of the doors, which also coordinates with the silver leaf on the Kenzie bedside tables. So again, as you're thinking about, okay, what do I have that I can move around? What makes sense together? Having some of those elements from one side of the room repeated on the other is what starts to kind of tie a space together. So we've got the warm silver on the bedside tables. We've got warm silver on the face of the cabinet. The dark frame of the cabinet kind of coordinates with the dark throw. And so you start to see repeating themes around the room that really tie it together. If you look at this direction, you want to see similar elements when you look this direction so that all your dark elements aren't on one side and all your light elements are on the other. You want it to kind of be a repeated theme, light and dark, light and dark, warm silver, warm silver. And then of course we've got our beautiful little spot of gold. So this room probably is gonna need some gold accessories or brass or warm bronze to tie that together. It's tying together a little bit with the brown in this pillow, but once I get to the accessory stage, you're probably going to end up seeing a little brass bowl over there and over here on this cabinet, uh, maybe some more warm textures in the covers of the books or a big beautiful vase that has that warmth in it. So as you look around the room, you're seeing that color palette repeat. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this bedroom remodel and learned how you can apply these bedroom decorating tips to create your own luxurious bedroom. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell and be notified when a new episode comes out, as well as you can leave me a question or a comment here. If you wanna check out some of my other episodes and tutorials, please do so. We cover everything from design, construction, and remodeling. You'll also wanna check out my complete kitchen, bathroom, and interior renovation courses on my website, erinvdesign.com. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at erinvstyle. Thanks, see you next time.